Toby Fox is not the new Masahiro Sakurai. He wants to make that very clear. The very first Undertale slash Deltarune newsletter is here, in which Toby Fox gives a delightfully cryptic update on the progress of Deltarune Chapter 3, and in which he reacts to one of our YouTube videos. The winter edition of the newsletter, which appears to be a seasonal offering going forward, includes updates on Toby's various projects, such as the Spamton sweepstakes, along with a comic all about Papyrus. Well, mostly about Papyrus. For his update on Deltarune's development, Toby says, The end is in sight for some of the content in Chapter 3. You see, Chapter 3 was going to have four somethings and three, six other somethings. But I've reduced the four somethings to 3.5 and refactored how the third other something might be shorter and less something like, while still maintaining the parenthe. 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 Oh, I can't say that word while still maintaining the parenthetical something-something, or something. Anyway, I'm swearing off some things now. So that was helpful? At least we know the number of some things involved in the new game. Or do we? What matters is, progress is being made on Deltarune Chapter 3. That said, it's worth bearing in mind that progress on this one chapter doesn't mean that it'll be released soon. The newsletter also links to an update on the Delta Rune website from September, in which Toby says, As stated last time, we've been simultaneously working on chapters 3, 4, and 5 of Delta Rune. A few more people are helping out, and the pace of the game creation is definitely improved from last time. The intention was to work on all three chapters simultaneously, but so far we've mostly just gotten work done on chapter 3 and 4. There may then still be a while to wait if Toby sticks to his plan of releasing all three of the in-development chapters at the same time. We'll have to wait and see. The newsletter also contains a rebuke for us personally. Not just for us, but for anyone who, like us, drew a connection between Toby and Masahiro Sakurai on their work writing columns for the Japanese gaming magazine Famitsu Weekly. Says Toby, Some people have said, Toby Fox now has Sakurai's old job. But I think looking at it like that is a bit strange. Think about it like this. If a writer quit, then they dressed up a rat they found in the supply closet to replace them, the articles the rat would write wouldn't be the same at all, right? By the way, the next article will be about cheese. In spite of his charming humility, Toby is definitely more than a supply closet rat to us. He has taken Sakurai's role in our lives in one respect, as we previously bought Famitsu chiefly to see what the creator of Smash had to say, and now we buy the magazine to see what an annoying dog has to say. On that note, though, it's true. Toby Fox and Masahiro Sakurai have very different approaches to their columns. Sakurai's fortnightly column tended to be about a wide variety of games and how their inner workings succeed or fail. In contrast, Toby Fox's monthly columns have focused, thus far, on one specific topic – games that are lost in translation between English-speaking nations and Japan. Following his first column on the Japanese-only game Tokimeki Memorial, and his second column on the English-only game Secret of Evermore, Toby's third column is a mailbag session with readers. He asked Japanese readers to write in with their favourite games that either didn't get translated into Japanese, or took longer than they would have liked to be localised. We're still preparing a full video on this article, as the format makes it a little harder to translate, but we can provide one small insight – how Scott Pilgrim directly inspired an Undertale song. One reader said that they wish Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the game, would be translated into Japanese, to which Toby replied, The music in this game is the best! It's by a band called Anamanaguchi, and they have a unique style that combines chiptune and rock. Actually, the Undertale song Hopes and Dreams is influenced by Anamanaguchi, and recently Anamanaguchi made a cover of Hopes and Dreams. Somehow, it feels like everything is connected. The rest of the column has plenty more insight into Toby's love of games, including his connection to Omori and Omocat. We'll provide it as soon as we can. In the meantime, the moral of this story is that YouTubers should never be taken too seriously. We maintain, though, that Toby Fox will always be a Masahiro Sakurai tier creator in our hearts.